All right, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to look at um, website design, both good and bad. So what I'd like you to do is work um, in teams of two or three if there's a odd amount. Actually, there's going to be two for everybody if you want. So um, hang out. You can still be like, do you guys want to work together? And you two, and you two, and you two, and you two. You can stay at your computers for right now, but I want you to look around for examples of bad website design, website design, and good website design, and then share with each other. If you're sitting side by side, it'll be easy, but um, kind of keep a list of things that are bad, things that you don't like. Um, be careful if you're going to Google bad websites because it might bring up something completely unrelated. You don't want that. It might get blocked here. Just kidding. Uh, but there are lots of horrific website examples, um, and we're going to share some of those together on the screen in a little while, but kind of look at some and talk with your partner over what you're finding, and let's start with bad website design first. Um, there used to be a website called um, Websites That Suck, but I think it's gone now. And it was really quite entertaining. Well, it still is here. Web pages that suck. Websites that suck. So if you want to go here and look at some gems, or if you know of some that maybe aren't so good, um, whatever works, kind of look around and um, find some, keep track of things that you're finding that are bad, ugly, don't work, bother you. If you're on your laptop and you want to pop up to this row with him, that'd be great. Yeah. If you're not relying on the desktop itself. Does somebody have a URL you want to send me to that's a bad website design? Yes. Uh, I have ours. What? I think we got the same. Oh, <laughs> is that the end? Or no? And not crime. It's. An, I think it's Nick. Don't try to. Well, oh. first of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's dot net. Yeah, dot net. Okay, but is this a problem? No. No. Oh wait, yeah. Okay, no. So Adobe Flash Player. Top right. On the yeah, but it, I, oh, no. but if you, yeah, no, I will unblock it, but if you build something in Flash and people don't have the Flash, the ability to turn this on, did they just leave your website too? Yeah. yeah. So maybe 15 years ago, Flash websites were all the rage. They had the animation and the motion, and now they've kind of completely gone out of vogue because if you don't have this add-on, or it takes a long time to download, whatever. So that's kind of funny that this came up, but it's .net? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Whoa. No. Yeah, we got the same one. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's start. I'm going to put this off to the side. What makes a website bad? This. <laughs> <laughs> this. Just kidding. Okay, so what specifically? Um, it's too much going on. Too much going on. Yes, what else? It's very unorganized. Unorganized. Okay. Navigate. Uh, what else? Lots of different fonts yeah. going on. Okay. Just rectangles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tangles every. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a question. Uh, is white space necessary in a website? It's helpful. Oh, yeah. So lack of white space? Yeah. yeah. Because um, it kind of, lack of white space and too much going on are kind of one and the same. Where, where do you look first? Right. What's important here? If you really were looking for something on this website, like oh one my one. goodness. Oh, look, they have kitschy animations down here too, like back in the AOL days. So um, 
silly animations. Um, I saw up here a helicopter was moving around here too at the top of the page also. Um, index. Is this really how you want to find something? Or could it maybe be categorized a wee bit better in smaller... You have a search bar. Oh, that, is there one on here? I, yeah. I translate this page, really? Does this need translating? Yes. Oh. Yes, it is, uh, oh. Okay. Uh, they do have a search bar, thankfully. Um, wow. It's not formatted very well. <laughs> I don't even know where... There's so much going on here that's bad. Um, anybody else have a bad website? Viruses? There could be viruses on here that you end up getting, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it just yeah. looks like a virus. <laughs> it looks like one, right? <laughs> virus, meaning um, uh, untrustworthy site, perhaps. Okay. Wow. I just can't imagine. How about color? Is it a little overwhelming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, too many colors. Whoops. Too many pictures. Too many pictures. Okay, so in web design, there's kind of a rule of thumb of how far you can push people. <laughs> Meaning, how much clicking do they want to do to get to what they want to find? How much are they willing to do? Um, and or scrolling. What do you think the limit, or the, not the limit, but what do you think the, the goal is? A person should be able to get to the content they want within how many clicks? Two. Three. Two or three. Absolutely. Um, here, to be fair, you might get there in one click, but it's because they have 700 things listed, and you can't even figure out where to look or where to find it. Um, H-I, is this alphabetical at least? Maybe. Maybe. Um, let's say we want an aquarium. This is a great site. How did you find this gem? Look up bad website design. Yeah. So, I guess you want an aquarium. One click, I guess we did get to a lot of details right away. But again, how far are we scrolling? And maybe they could have had subcategories of in-wall aquariums or corner aquariums or something like that that would have helped us drill down to what we were looking for. So I think, I'm pretty sure that you said when we were talking, bad navigation already. Um, difficult to navigate, definitely. Who else found a gem of a site? Yes. So the Yale School of Art website. <laughs> so it's www.art.yale.edu. This and is a, their actual school yes, of art website. Yes, this one comes up all the time, and I'm blown away by it. What? <laughs> I would have thought I went to the wrong site. So, this every year people find this and I'm blown away by it. Like, is it intentionally hideous? Yeah. I sure Probably, hope so. Yeah. Okay, what do we, what's gross about this? Or Everything. what don't we like about this? Jello. And then the background is like, the background being repeated, right? The way it's tiled. Okay, so let's see. Pictures tile in background is annoying. Um, what else? The color scheme does not match. <laughs> there's no, there's no cohesiveness. No cohesiveness. Absolutely. Um, at least in these two boxes. There's some breathing room from the edge of the box to the letters to the words. Um, in web design, we call that padding. There's some breathing room there. Um, up here, it's kind of like they just did a highlighter over the words and did each one separately. There's no breathing room around it, so that looks awkward to me. Um, what are we looking at? What can we do here? Like, if I went to this site, what would my goal be? Like, where's... I guess over here we have navigation about the school. Apply. Should we all apply? <laughs> Based on this, I think we can all get in. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. I don't know about this. The fact that there's a rectangle around every set of words. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what really does it. I don't really mind the background. It's square. <laughs> 
And then down here, they have white type over a white background, so to make it readable. That you can barely. <laughs> they basically highlighted it in black. I'm really curious how much tuition is. Fifteen bucks. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Yeah, and they're like, oh. <laughs> Just back up. Okay, does this bother anybody? Yeah. Um, it was cute at first. <laughs> yeah. With the kangaroo, but never mind. Kangaroo, kangaroo was cute. Even the corgi was cute. This is too much. Um, so I'm trying to find out how much it costs to go here, for real. And it's taking an act of Congress to find out tuition fees and cost. Oh my gosh. 39.9, folks. Jeez. And when you're done, you can make this a year. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Rectangles. We're not a fan of rectangles. Let's go back and I think did we say that? But if we didn't. Oh yeah, rectangles everywhere. Okay, I can't handle that one anymore. What's another one? LTC.com. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh, LTC.com. Oh, not go to L LTC.com, yeah. Okay, what's it gonna be? It scares me. Really generic, weird. Oh, would you trust getting insurance from this place? Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay, what is this? Oh, this is a terrible. It's just not very modern. It's very yeah, modern. No, they do. Okay. It's a lot of information. I don't know what to look for. So, from a design standpoint, it's just maybe, like you said, outdated or not. Not professional enough for what so it is. So that, that's the thing, too. Out. It triggers you to not trust the company, maybe, or be a little wary of them, or maybe they're like, is this real, or did somebody just buy some stock photography and put some words and they're trying to get me to send 10 grand to them for a life insurance policy? Is this a, like a front? You have to have some, it's not trustworthy. Uh, there's one in the number. <laughs> right. Um, oh, sorry, I keep getting stuck to the watch. Okay. Um, I'm kind of like, what is LT? Oh, long term care. Okay. Interesting. Uh, anything else? Let's keep sharing from like each group. Yeah. Um, this one is N W O Killers dot, and that's W E E B L Y dot com. Weebly. Weebly. Okay. Weebly. No. <laughs> A conspiracy site. But you you just scroll down for like an hour. Oh god. Let's <laughs> keep on going. Who trusts this site? Nobody. Nobody. Okay, so here's the problem. Um, scrolling forever <laughs> is a problem. Let's get that on here. Scrolling forever, which also falls into the, I want to find what I'm looking for quickly. And if I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, um, impossible. Any other gems? Somebody find the worst one ever. There's two of them that almost always get pulled up in class that oh, are just... FAFSA. FAFSA? <laughs> okay, there's an interesting one. Because that's probably not meant to be bad, right? It's, it is so bad. It's so bad. So, from a um, user standpoint, or from a design standpoint, it's okay. But maybe from a usability... Yeah, I just have people. Yeah, no, this I agree. This is one of the most painful things you'll ever have to do. And if you have children later, you get to do it for them, too. So, not fun. Um, anybody? When you said LTC and I started to type in our school site, um, some people, it's been redesigned a lot and it's better, but it's still not awesome in certain respects. Does anybody, have any of you tried to use it um, from a phone? Yeah. How does that work? How about Blackboard from your phone? Board? No. It, it works, works sometimes. Perfectly. I've been surprised, actually, since I've been here that it works really? on my phone. Yeah. I thought it was not too difficult. It's not the best. Okay. So, have you been on sites where they're not um, responsive design, meaning that when you view them on your phone, they don't change to be perfect for your phone. They just stay exactly like this. So, you either have to tip your phone or... It shrinks down the whole page. Right. You know, you're viewing the whole this whole screen in one inch by two inches on your screen. So not being mobile friendly or not having responsive design is a huge problem. 
And um, as a business, are you going to turn off people or lose people based on your website not being mobile friendly? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> at some point in this class, we're going to look at statistics um, of how many people access websites from desktops, iPads, and phones. Which one of the three do you think is the highest? Phones. Um, and then? Tablets. Tablets and then? PC. Yeah, big desktops. So we used to design everything for this shape, this rectangular shape of a web page. Um, it's going to look beautiful at this size or maybe even a bigger screen. Now we always have to think about how's it going to look um, on a small screen. Mobile is huge. All right, any other? Websites. Yes. Um, I'll spell it up for you. Yeah. Barbers. Burgers. Burgers. Huge jazz burgers. Oh. H U G H. No, nope. yes, it came up like that. Huh? So it doesn't have the domain. Okay. It doesn't exist? Okay. Um, there's another issue. What if people, um, what if the name of your business is kind of unique or that domain name is already purchased by someone so you add another letter or you put LLC behind your name? If people get directed to a, site, a page like this saying it doesn't exist or 404 page missing, you guys seen that if you go to a dead page? Is that a bad thing? Yeah. That makes it look like um, you are not paying attention to your website design, you have broken links, so broken links slash 404 page not found, um, or this domain isn't even hooked up and on it. Okay, others. Okay. i got to find a couple to share with you because they're world's worst website. Is this where I typically find it? Angel Fire. Boy, this one's a little bit. Okay. So, probably created to showcase what not to do. And if you had the privilege of existing in the late 90s, early 2000s, when the website was more of like people, individuals were taking it on and they knew how to do this. I can make my words go back and forth and bounce. Cool, I'm going to do that. So everybody did that. I can make a background sparkle, or I can make a little animation go. They thought that was just the greatest thing on earth. So what annoys you, or what is difficult about this site? Just the color scheme. Okay, can't, color can't, scheme. Can't read it. Can't read it. Okay. So why can't you read it? Can you oh, pinpoint? <laughs> So the color choices, the color of the font on the background just makes it hard to read. Whether there's low contrast or blue on red, green on red, hard to read. Really hard to read. Um, so they've kind of put information in here. Keep your background simple. White or light colors usually work best. So like this nonsense or over here is awfully hard to see. Constant running animations can be distracting. Yeah. How about excessive advertisements or pop-ups? Does that bother you on some sites? Yeah, or, it's not as much as it used to, but it does. It can be annoying, right? Um, excessive advertising slash pop-ups. Okay. Um, <coughs> let's see. How about? Typos, misspelled words, and improper punctuation make your web look amateurish and unfinished. Always run a spell check before you upload. Have you ever hit a website that has poor spelling or grammar? And what did you think of that company or person? Let's go with company. and I'll make it personal. Do you trust the company? Do you no. think they're... Valid, a great place to go give your money to if they're going to spell words wrong and not care. Right, so spelling and grammar are really important. Um, download time. We don't think about that as much as we used to, but um, 
Brandon, you said you remember dial-up. Yes. <laughs> so, the way the world of dial-up would work, especially if you had a slower modem, um, it would bring in the page kind of line by line. It would fill in. So if it was slow, like the page would show up, some of the words would start showing up, and if there was a picture, it would start filling in from the top down. Or if it wasn't ever going to come in, you'd get the red X, which you still get now if there's a broken link or something. But, boy, we really take for granted how quickly we have information at our fingertips. I think if we have to wait for literally two seconds for something to populate, we get angry. Am I wrong? I feel like I saw something on the Twitter that the average person will only look at something every five seconds before they click off. Yeah. We have no patience. We used to, I could go get a cup of coffee while a web page was loading back in the bad old days. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. So now we kind of take for granted that everybody has fast internet. Um, fairly accurate, but let's think about our two counties specifically, Sheboygan and Manitowoc County. Um, what are our big cities? Sheboygan and Manitowoc. Right? Um, and then we have a handful of smaller cities, but then we have a handful of farmland, right? Country, farm. How do they get internet? It's not spectrum. Anybody know? We live in the sticks. Yeah. Maybe with a, like a satellite. Yeah. Some people get it through their satellite, like Dish TV or something, um, or through a phone line still, like um, fiber optics. So, if you are a company in Valders, let's say there's a restaurant in Valders that has a website. People in the city of Valders probably have internet, but the minute you get out in the country, it's definitely slower. And you can't have a, a page that's so filled with pictures and data and movies and whatever that it takes a long time to download because it will upset them. So you kind of have to think about who your client is as well. And that whole concept of download time is definitely um, something to think about. So I'm going to add that. And then also, um, I mentioned kind of if the images aren't linked correctly, you get that red box in it and nothing shows up. Is that a problem with web design when the pictures don't show up? Yeah. Oops. Okay. Another thing I want to share with you, and we're going to look at this in the next few weeks, is any and every web page you go to is just written with code. And if you right click on a site and choose view the page source, you get the HTML for this, and this is actually very small. It's um, this page uses frames, but your browser doesn't support them. That's all that's in there. That's interesting. Um, let me show you another one. Visit Wisconsin.com. <clears throat> okay. Do we have hopes that this will be a oh, Wisnet? What's going on here? Did I type something wrong? Travel Wisconsin. Maybe that was the name of the website that I got all wrong. Okay. So here's Travel Wisconsin. Here's what we see on the front end using a browser. We obviously, the navigation's pretty obvious. And this is a big topic, right? Travel Wisconsin. There's a bajillion things that people could be looking for on this site. So they have to kind of chunk it down into different things. And you can see as I hover over this, I'm getting more obvious, um, more options. So this is what the page looks like. Lots of pictures. Um, depending on what your topic is or what your website's about, graphics can make or break it. We like pictures. We like seeing things that we're going to do or buy. Um, all right. So that's the front end. Let me do that same concept of come up here, <clears throat> view page source. <clears throat> this is the code that writes this page. <laughs> now up top here is a lot of scripts and that's something that the IT web and developers, they do that type of coding. Down here, whoa, well, slow down, Nelly. Oh, okay, there we go. This is a little bit more um, like what we're going to look at. The word 
or the code right here of LI means list item or a bulleted, um, there's a bullet in front of it, like a bulleted list. And that's how you tell it to put something in a bullet, is you use these codes before and after it. So really, somebody could sit down with Notepad++, which we're going to do in a few weeks, and start typing in this code, because they know code, and this is all they ever see. They don't think about the pretty side, they just know from somebody's sketch of how it should look that this is how they need to code it, and this is what it produces on the front end. So all websites are nothing but code. All of your emails that come into your um, email system that aren't just text, that are the pictures and the logos, those are all HTML also, that same code. All right. Um, any other, there's one other really bad website that I really wanted to show you. Um, <coughs> I wrote Wart. I can't even type today. Wow. <clears throat> huh. I don't know. We'll go back to 2006 and get this article, but it's not the one I was thinking of. But the one that I was going to show you honestly has a disclaimer that if you suffer from seizures, not to go on this website, it's constantly flashing and like that twirling weird thing we saw before um, and it could trigger seizures, which is crazy. Worst site number one. Okay, do these things bother you sometimes, pop-ups? Yes, yes. Does this bother you? Stop it. Here's an example of slow loading time and when um, we start to lose patience and say, never mind, move on. Also, this annoys me when I think I'm getting to something and I'm not, like where you think you're going to find information, looks like the same darn page again. Okay, how about websites that um, play sound? Do you guys like that, or do you like the option to be able to turn the sound off? Ever had that where songs are playing in the background, the music is playing? Mm -hmm. It is, and I think that's maybe why it's not as common anymore, but um, audio can't be stopped. It's a bad example. Okay, so lot going on here. Characteristics that are annoying. Oops. Okay, whatever. So, characteristics of bad web design. <laughs> um, this is kind of everything that you automatically know without studying this, things that are bothersome to you. So, the opposite of this probably is what makes a website good, right? Did any of you find a good website or something that you really enjoy or you can understand? Netflix. Hmm? Netflix. Netflix, okay. What else? Yeah. I think eBay is a pretty good website. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. So I was thinking of like an eBay or an Amazon. Think of how many millions of things are out there, and yet you can navigate to get to what you want to relatively quickly, right? You can, they have it um, figured out and categorized where you can go to certain headings and eventually get to what you want. The other thing, thinking of um, Amazon, is that search bar at the top. Like, I don't even try to think where I'm going. I just type in immediately what I want, and it pretty much takes you there. So... All of these flipped around are going to give you what makes a website good. 
All right. Um, there is a website. We kind of looked at the websites that suck, or at least I pulled that up for you that you could take a peek at. Um, 25 worst websites of 2013. I bet there were some gems in that year. Oh, this is funny. Healthcare.gov. I don't know if anybody was... I was literally going to say that, but I was like, it's government, so it's probably not easy, but yeah. That was quite the, the hubbub back when that came out. How much it cost to have it built, how long it took, and how inefficient it was. That was incredible. Um, let's see what else we have here. No, none of these are jumping out at me. That Yale School of Art one is just too much. Um, okay, so the opposite side of it is the Webby Awards. Again, I typed wrong because I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, this is kind of ironic because here there what does this kind of remind you of? Oh uh, the art one. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, not quite as bad, but not great. So these are some of allegedly the best website winners um, of 2019 because the 2020 is out now. So websites, you can come down here to the category for 2019. And then you want to look at, did that just go? There we go. Um, in this drop down, where did that go? Okay, this is bugging me. This is a problem because I'm looking at websites and then I want to drop down to how about best user interface? These are the winners Google Earth Studio. Take 17 clicks to where we're going. Okay, I gotta log in. I don't want to do that. But those are kind of interesting because they're usually a little bit more high tech or funky. Like I don't always find them to be the most the best awards, but it's kind of what's new and trending. Um, so it's kind of an interesting place to go and look for web design. This one is still spinning. Remember when I clicked on this like an hour ago? So that's a problem too. All right. Okay, I have a checklist for you that's called Web Design Best Practice che Checklist. And this is also in Blackboard if you um, lose this or want to look at it another time. So there's a document in Blackboard. I'll give you those two since they're stuck. Actually, you can go back to your own spot, or you're going to be working on your own now individually. So if you you can stay if you have a laptop, you're fine with that, or you could move. All right, so this is the good stuff. What makes a website good? And I'm going to pop into Blackboard and show you this document. <clears throat> So what I'm going to have you do is go to a website that you use a lot. So all of you are going to have different things here. You're going to write in what the URL is on the sheet of paper, who the target audience is, and what's the purpose of their website. So are they always selling something? Is it an educational site? Is it um, meant to be a reference for people to go and find out? Like I don't know, maybe you go to um, Web Med M or whatever, md.com to like look up what's wrong with you. You know, that's more of a reference site. So you're going to look at that. Then I want you to look at these different options. And I want you to look at more than just the home page, the front page. Kind of look around, see if you can navigate it well. And then say, do you think that their page layout is appealing to their target audience? And then, you know, check it off. If it isn't, or if there's something that you want to say about it, you know, you can write it right behind it. Like, you know, they missed the mark here. This isn't appealing or whatever. You're going to explain it a little bit. Um, some of these are very easy. One check off and you're done. On browser compatibility, you do not have to <laughs> load all these different browsers and check it. But on your machines, you probably have Google Internet Exploder, as I call it. You might even have Firefox on there. So you can at least check it on two different browsers to see if it looks different. Um, not necessarily all of these. 
If you have a phone with you or a smaller tablet, um, pull it up on those and see how they um, how the site displays on mobile devices. Um, look at the navigation. Look at the color and the graphics. Is there sufficient contrast? Black on white is the highest contrast there is. Light gray on medium gray is really hard to read. Um, if there's multimedia, videos, or audio, does it have a purpose, or is it just there to kind of annoy you? Content presentation, functionality, accessibility. Again, some of these all hyperlinks work. If you're looking at Amazon.com, you'll be here until um, 2075, looking at all the links on Amazon. So I would recommend you kind of go to a smaller business site, not something like Amazon or eBay that's so ginormous. So think of um, a website that maybe you frequent, a local store or something. Um, accessibility. Um, you have to think about um, also, if, let's see, things that are in this checklist. I'll stick to that. We'll get to it a lot deeper as we go through this class. But um, color is not used alone to convey meaning. So some. See if that's the case, because colorblindness is a thing, and um, lots of men have different versions of colorblindness where you can't see red. So if you're only using red to convey some message, a large percent of your population might not be able to read that. So just go through this checklist with the site of your choice, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you want to take a break um, at any time during the next you know, 15, 20 minutes while we're working on this, go do that, and then, you know, we'll figure out when everybody's wrapping up with this project. But if you want to go right now, or if you want to go in 10 minutes, that's fine. Okay?